Now this is the Paul who has rewritten the life of Jesus Christ and said to us, one, Jesus said, I came not to change and alter the law. Whose law? The law of Moses. Not one jot, nor one tittle, till heaven and earth shall pass away. No one must change or alter the law. For anyone that does so is the least in the sight of God. That's what Jesus said. Now Paul said he came with a new covenant. Paul said he came with a new testament. Paul said he came to the Gentiles and that they no longer had to, those that followed Paul, they no longer had to observe the law of Moses. What was the law of Moses? The Ten Commandments. They no longer had to. They could eat pig's meat. The Jewish people today, following the law of Moses, they can't eat pig's meat. So how could Paul change that law and tell them they could eat pig's meat? Paul said they didn't have to circumcise all Muslims, all Jews, all of those that follow the prophets are circumcised. How is it that Paul said they don't have to be circumcised? Paul said they didn't have to observe the Sabbath. Now the Sabbath is one of the commandments, one of the Ten Commandments. And Jesus said, when they asked him about, Jesus said, do you know which is the greatest of all the commandments? What commandments was he talking about? He's talking about the commandments of Moses. He said, do you know which was the, is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul. This is what Jesus said was the first of the commandments. Because that commandment from Moses was, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one, and thou shalt not worship anyone except the Lord thy God, and thou shalt not bow down to any graven images in the heavens or in the earth or in the sea below. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God, and thou shalt not worship any gods along with him. That was the first of the commandments. But Paul said, we didn't have to observe that commandment. And it was through the epistles of Paul that Constantine later on, 300 years later, he decided to reconcile this new Jesus at the Council of Nicaea, to be specific, in the year 354, it was Constantine that reconciled Paul's Jesus from the historical Jesus and decided that he would go with Paul's Jesus and kill everybody else. And that's where the Trinity was born. That's where the incarnate God was born. That's where the atonement was born. That's where the idea of Jesus Christ being crucified, dead and buried for three days and coming back was born. This is where the idea of Jesus being God was born because Constantine accepted that idea because Constantine had already deified his father as sole evictus and that's how December the 25th became the birthday of Jesus although Jesus could not have been born December 25th because that would have been the winter in Lebanon and anyone here that is from Lebanon will tell you September the 25th is probably snow in the ground so why would they have a baby in the manger when there's snow on the ground but that was the date of the soul evictus and that's when they changed the Sabbath from Saturday, from Yom al-Sabt, Yom al-Sabt. All the Arabs in this room know Yom al-Sabt, the Sabbath is Saturday. So how did the day of worship for the Christians become Sunday? Because that was the day of the worshiping of the sun. And that's the day that Constantine worshiped. 
and that's where they took the name of Jesus and took changed the Sabbath and made it into Sunday and moon day Monday and Tuesday Tur, another God and Wednesday another God and Fours day another God and Friars day another God all gods of the Romans and the Greeks what did I have to do with Jesus Christ? Absolutely nothing. So a new covenant was born through Paul and the collaboration and the official documentation of Constantine who then assigned an official Bishop of Rome. That Bishop of Rome became the official pontiff of the Catholic Church. And so today, that's why the Pope is called the pontiff. He's called the shadow of God on earth. Whose shadow? Who's God? The God of Paul, the God of Constantine. Certainly not the God of Jesus. Now Paul, through his writings, set up a nefarious situation that virtually stamped out, wiped out, imprisoned, tortured, killed, eliminated all of the Unitarians because those that followed Jesus Christ were called Unitarians. That means they were subscribing to one God. And what, would he, what happened to the Unitarians? They were thrown to the lions. They were thrown to the lions until they were gradually eliminated. Then Constantine made Christianity the official religion. Why? Because he made a distinction between the Nazarenes and the Christians. If you were Christian, you were cool. If you were Christian, you were official. If you were Christian, you could be assimilated. If you were Christian, you were constantized. If you were acceptable, if you embraced the Pauline doctrine, then you became a Christian. And Christian then became an antithesis of the Nazarenes. It also became an antithesis of the life and the message of the historical Jesus. This new evolution, this new faith system, officially adopted by Constantine, the Roman Emperor, the establishment of the Church of Rome, and the subsequent Christology that has developed. I said Christology. Now what is Christology? Christology is the scientific, systematic, dramatization and mythological replacement of the historical Jesus. That's what Christology is. Because if we want to love Christ and follow Christ, we have to follow the real Christ. We have to follow, find, and subscribe to the historical Christ. The issue is, who is willing to follow the historical Christ? And even after you receive the information, some of you are angry right now. If you had some rocks, you'd probably stone me right now. Some of you might want to invite me outside to beat me up. You might want to stand up where you are and just say, you're a liar. I don't care what you say. Jesus is God. And you're going to continue saying that. Because change is difficult.